stories for you. This one's from the Post Millennial. There will be an out and out brawl. AOC calls for political violence. If Kamala Harris were to win the election and remove current FTC chair, anyone goes near Lena Khan and there will be an out and out brawl. And that is a promise. I uh, really? <laughs> OK, look, man, I'm a skeptic. Uh, I'm a fence sitter on a lot of things. I don't want to say she's calling for political violence. Out and out brawl could just be a turn of phrase, meaning like you will, we, we will file paperwork. But the way she's saying it leans more towards the there's going to be a fist fight. You know what I mean? But maybe she's just being hyperbolic. Either way, not appropriate AOC, but let's talk. Rep AOC was threatening political violence Wednesday against anyone attempting to remove Lena Khan as the chairwoman of the Federal Trade Commission. Why? Like, how much do we care about Lena Khan? Let me make this clear. Since billionaires have been trying to play footsie with the ticket, anyone goes near Lena Khan and there will be an out and out brawl. And that is a promise. She proves this admin fights for working people. It would be terrible leadership to remove her. And of course, this comes from she's quoting a tweet from Joseph Zabalo or Zabayo. Harris surrogate Mark Cuban doesn't believe Harris should keep Lena Khan as FTC chair. If it, were, if it were me, I wouldn't, Cuban said to Semaphore at the KFF lunch. By trying to break up the biggest tech companies, you risk our ability to be the best in artificial intelligence. The congresswoman was referring to comments from billionaire Harris supporter Mark Cuban, who told Semaphore that if vice president wins the November presidential election, he would remove her. Cuban approves of Khan initiating antitrust probes into phar pharmacies, but said she has erred in fighting big tech over AI. The bigger picture is... She's hurting more than she's helping, Cuban said. The FTC rejected that assessment, according to the outlet, reiterating Khan's policy that extreme consolidation is not good for the U.S. economy. Chair Khan believes that choosing competition over centralized corporate control of the markets is a path to letting the best ideas win. Senator Bernie Sanders also indicated his continued support of Khan, posting on X, Mark Cuban is wrong. Lena Khan is the best FT FTC chair in modern history. By taking on corporate greed and illegal monopolies, Lena is doing an exceptional job preventing large corporations from ripping off consumers and exploiting workers. Now I think she should be removed and I'm with Mark Cuban because I don't trust Bernie Sanders and AOC. I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. I don't trust Mark Cuban either. I'm just wondering how Lena Khan came to be this like figure in conflict. Like, why do they like her so much? Whatever. Ocasio-Cortez quickly endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris as the Democratic presidential candidate, even though she has previously mused about her enormous peril of having Joe Biden forced out of the nomination he had won through the primary system. Biden later admitted that former, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other powerful Democrats did remove him from the presidential race. Indeed. But the first thing I got to say is, do y'all really think she was calling for political violence? Like, I don't think AOC is suggesting she's going to box Kamala Harris or something. She shouldn't say these things, though, to be completely honest, because she's indicating that if Kamala Harris removes someone, there's going to be a brawl like AOC. Are you saying you're going to fight Kamala? I don't I, I, <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate. You know what I mean? I think she's talking about a political controversy. I don't think we need to say she's talking about political violence. But you know what? I, I know what's going to happen. Everyone in the comments is going to say, Tim, stop giving these people the benefit of the doubt. They wouldn't give it to you. AOC is using extremist rhetoric. They've been doing this against Trump, and we've seen violence. So I can only say this. Yeah, you're, you're mostly right. AOC should know better than right now with heightened tensions to use any kind of uh, uh, allusions to violence. This is funny. The first thing I'll say is it's really it's really hard sometimes when I say illusion and people are like, huh, because I think I'm saying illusion, but I'm saying illusion. And I'm like, maybe I should just not say that. But I don't know the word I choose. Fine. Don't don't allude. OK, I'll say that. Don't allude to the use of violence in any, any circumstance. So when people come on the show on Tim, on Timcast IRL, we say like, what are the rules? Can we not say I'm like, well, YouTube has rules about what they'll ban you for. And so we always just say stuff like medical issues. Talk to a doctor because we're not doctors. Uh, we don't give financial advice. We don't give legal advice and do not make allusions to violence. That means don't say things like there's going to be a brawl with me and that guy. They do this. No, no. I'll tell you why. So we have people who say things like I think we had one show where a guy was like, someone needs to defenestrate that guy. And I was like, no. And we take it down. The, the issue is this. First liability on us. If we host a show where someone directs an individual 
to attack a person, defenestrative court meaning, mean, uh, defenestrate, meaning to throw out the window. Please don't say that. Um, there is a there's a legal liability where they can say like you hosted this individual, you knew what they were saying, blah blah blah, and it's it's limited, it is. But YouTube also says no to this kind of stuff, and depending on if they're trying to censor you, and they usually are, um, it's it's a no go. But the reality is also this: if you say there's going to be an out and out brawl, and you use allusions to violence in your speech. Your, we already had two attempts on Donald Trump's life, plus a plot, a, thir- a third being a plot. We don't, we got to simmer everything down. And I know people say like, oh, Trump says fight, fight, fight. He's not saying physically. He's not saying physically. And I would defend, there's a line. If you want to say we're going to fight for what we believe in, fight literally does mean politically, legally, or otherwise. A brawl out and out, adding out and out to the brawl is outright saying there's going to be violence. So if you, even if you don't mean it, I don't recommend you use that language. AOC, okay. But I'm not going to pretend like she came out saying, go beat people up or anything like that. But I do love that we're here. We are, we're at the point now where, what is, what is this? Um, MSN.com is running a how close is the U.S. to a second civil war slideshow. That's right. Uh, I covered this before, but like, this is where we are in this country. Could a second civil war actually happen? From the Post and Courier, a second civil war in the forecast, our better angels will not allow it. Winthrop Poll says SC expects civil war, it, it, it seems. This is the point I'm getting to. We're at a point now where like half the country thinks we're on the verge of a civil war. And I know Tim, you know, like Tim Pool saying civil war. I ain't making this up. I didn't make Post and Courier write this story. OK, you know, I'm looking at you guys. Don't 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 point that finger at me. The latest Winthrop University poll was still in the field when the storm came. The results mostly collected from before the four hurricane uh, uh, named Helene slammed in South Carolina, et cetera, et cetera. Helene demonstrated yet again. South Carolina spent the past week demonstrating that when disaster hits, their first inclination is to help their neighbors. They want to say now back to the poll. Look at that. Look at all that patter. Winthrop headline news, as reported by the Post and Courier was that 47% of South Carolina adults, including 53% of Republicans, believe the U.S. is either very or somewhat likely to undergo another civil war in the near future, say a decade or less. It's more than a little unnerving to think that we've become divided, that half of of us expect an all-out insurrection. But look closer and notice that there's no option for a middle ground. No opportunity to say I don't really waste my time thinking about it. There's very likely, somewhat likely, unlikely, or not very likely. 70% of South Carolinans said very likely. Still more than we'd like, but nothing like that headline, 47%. Another way of looking at the poll is to say 47% chose the closest they could get to. It's on my mind with 30% saying somewhat likely, 17% saying somewhat unlikely. Please don't play games with me, dude. People fear a civil war and you do not need a polling question of I don't think about it. The question is, do you think so? The people who don't think about it are going to say no. The people who do follow politics and are worried are going to say yes, which puts the number around 47 percent. So it's less than half. But I wonder what their feelings really are. And that's the challenging thing. Are these people who are concerned about others? Are these people who are actually feeling the rage deep in their bellies and want to engage in violence themselves? I certainly hope not. But my friends, I can only tell you that we live in trying times. That's why even if AOC didn't mean to be overt and direct, and I don't think she did, I, I think she's just being a little too aggressive. We got to watch the language. We got to simmer things down. Here's what we want to happen. Biden and Kamala retire. Donald Trump wins. We get criminal prosecutions where there are crimes committed in government. We get firing of the bureaucratic state to, to what degree we can. We get border security. We get de-escalation of conflict. We get the economy back on track, energy product- production on track. That's the plan. Now, Ian Crossland, you know him, you love him on Timcast IRL, says we should pardon all the Democrats. And everybody is just like, are you nuts? I say no. I say no. Where applicable, anybody who committed a crime in government, manipulation, whatever, should be criminally charged and tried. It should be a legitimate trial. It should be warrants, judges, etc. And the reason I say this is, if there are crimes committed, and we know there are, right, like the manipulation of emails, tampering with evidence to get one of Trump's aides uh, arrested in charge, Carter Page. We can't just say you're allowed to do that. There has to be a limiting factor. If you engage in corruption, we the people will not stand for it. We do not want violence. We do not want civil war. We want accountability. I hope we get it. 
I hope uh, everybody chills out. I'll wrap this one up there. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the show with everyone you know. And follow me on X and, uh, and Instagram at TimCast. And uh, I'll say it one more time. Give that, give that, X, uh, uh, that like button a smash. And uh, for those that are watching live, we'll grab your super chats for everybody else. More segments to come. Plus, we're going to have segments up on the weekend. I am, uh, we're working hard. We're working hard. Plus, we've been launching a ton of shorts and uh, just, just increasing the workload the best of our abilities. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you on the next segment.